Hey guys, and welcome back to Better C Sharp. Today we're going to be talking about dependency injection. Uh, what is dependency injection? So dependency injection is like an automated way to provide uh, dependencies for your classes. So in this instance, uh, you see we have a processor has a constructor that takes three dependencies. Um, and right now we're explicitly setting those up and then calling the constructor that takes those. Uh, but what dependency injection will get us is we will no longer need to explicitly call the constructor processor. Uh, we'll have what is known as a container do it for us or a provider do it for us. So um, let's go ahead and set it up. This is probably the best way to, to check it out. Uh, if you look at our CS proj, we have added uh, Microsoft Extensions Dependency Injection as a package reference. I like to use this one uh, because there's like not as much magic involved. Some of the dependency injection frameworks will like scan all of your uh, assembly at runtime and be like, everything is injectable. And uh, I, I don't like that personally. There's already too much magic. Uh, in the Microsoft extensions uh, dependency injection already. So uh, I like to use this one though uh, because it does alleviate some of the issues um, that we have when when uh, creating classes this way. And some of the issues are like you get you get these dependency trees and like you have to construct things in a certain order and sometimes that order can change and then you end up flipping things around uh, in your construction logic and it just, uh, it can provide a lot of like code turnover for not really any logical changes. And uh, that can get distracting and like, you know, you could introduce subtle bugs there by accident. So uh, let's go ahead and set up some dependency injection. So what I like to do is uh, out here in beside main, I like to make a static, uh, a static method that gives back a uh, iService provider. So iService provider. Uh, build service provider. And I like to use this method to go ahead and just set up everything we need to get a service provider. And so we can go look at service provider real quick. I don't know how much is actually in here. Yeah, get service. So very simple interface. Um, there's like extensions for this, uh, extension methods that uh, give this a little bit more of a surface area <laughs> of a, uh, of things you can do with it, but uh, get service is the main thing we're going to be calling here. Um, and so what we need to do to provide all of the things that it needs to get services uh, is a service container. So I, or service collection, sorry. The service collection, collection equals new service collection. Um, and that is in the extensions dependency injection namespace. Uh, and then at the end here, we'll return collection dot build service provider. Uh, and what we've done when we pulled in dependency injection, I believe we have also pulled in like some of the other uh, extension methods for, for uh, the, the service provider itself. <laughs> so let's talk about how you set up services and really I would think of services here as dependencies. So the like this is, you know, you're you're specifying all the dependencies that things in your program can have. So for instance, we have processor. And so let's, you know, let's start there. Let's say, you know, uh, collection dot add singleton in our case. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, processor. So what does this mean? Um, what we're doing here, there's three three methods of adding to a service collection. One of them is transient, one of them is scoped, and one of them is singleton. Uh, so transient, so these are lifetimes, right? Uh, transient means every time you request a service from the service provider, it's going to give you a new one. Even if you request it on one line and then the next line and then the next line, you're going to get three different instances, right? Um, scoped is different than that. It is uh, not 
it's not this like scope that you think of in C sharp. There is a let's say uh, let me show you real quick. Service provider equals build service provider. Nope. Oh, sorry. New uh, build service provider. So service providers can create a scope, right? And this is an I disposable. So using var scope equals that. And what happens is inside of here, uh, the first time you request a service, it'll create it. So like you know, rp equals uh, service provider dot uh, get service, and we'll say processor. Uh, in this case, if we added this as a scoped uh, as a scoped dependency, as a scoped service, uh, add scoped, we would get a certain instance on this line. And then if we said, you know, var p2 equals service provider dot get service processor again, we would get the same instance. Oh, sorry, get, get service. So these would get back the exact same instance. Uh, but if we came outside of here um, and, you know, we had another set of these, these would be uh, different instances. So at the end of that using, uh, scope it will get cleaned up and so then you'll get new instances whenever you request it so that's how scopes work that doesn't make much sense for what we're working on uh, that usually you see that in like ASP.NET uh, applications and there's middleware like behind the scenes that manages that stuff for you that like it'll create one when you receive a request and it'll clean it up at the end of the request um, but anyway so we're gonna go we're gonna move away from scoped uh, at singleton so and then there's uh singleton which is you know every time you request it you get the same one um and that that one's pretty obvious so let's go ahead and set up uh we're going to comment all of this stuff out right and we're going to see what happens if we say you know processor processor equals service provider dot get service of type processor Um, and then we'll say processor.com. Uh, so right now, this will actually build. Um, so that's one of the downfalls, right? Is that when when you move to this, you're losing some of the safety that you get from your types having explicit constructors because you're not calling them yourself. Uh, the What happens is the service provider will look at available constructors on the thing that you're requesting and say, do I have everything I need to make this thing uh, if it hasn't already been made? And can I give that back? So let's go ahead and try and run this. Um, and what we'll get is unable to resolve service for type iData provider. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, so we'll say collection.add singleton. And we'll do an uh, <clears throat> we'll do a iData provider of int. And uh, so the last time we provided it uh, by just you know giving the type, but you can also construct them yourself. And so we'll do that here. So we'll do a new random int provider with our same uh, values from before. <laughs> and so now if we run this now, uh, we should get a different error message. It'll probably tell us, yeah, we can't find the manipulator now. So once we clear all these up, um, and so we'll do another one, add singleton. In fact, we can do transient, why not? Uh, transient, and we'll do a square. Because it doesn't have any setup, right? There's no there's no real benefit to doing it either way. Um, transient is good for things that, uh, when you don't want the same uh, one back, when you want a new one back, uh, you definitely want transient. Um, but also it's good for like smaller types that don't require much setup. Like the constructor is not very large. There's not a lot of logic there. And square, uh, if you remember, does not have a constructor. So very easy to set up. Uh, so we can do a transient one. And then let's go ahead and also do our writer. So collection.add singleton. And we want this one to for sure be a singleton because we're going to be writing to a file. And we only want to let that happen like once 
at a time. Um, and actually, if you look at the documentation, I don't know if it's on uh, this documentation. Uh, no, it is not. But if you look at the Microsoft Docs for this, it'll tell you uh, when you do when you add things to singletons. Um, if you're in a multi-threaded environment, you should make sure that everything they can do is thread safe. So uh, we don't have to worry about that right now. Uh, we will in a future episode. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and add our writer, which is an I writer of int, right? And we'll say a new file writer. Nope. File writer. Um, and we're going to go to squared dot text again. So. So now if we run, I don't think we're getting any output. Um, oh, whoops. We did not actually. So that's a good point. So just because we've added square, we haven't said what interface this fulfills. So we actually have to ex be explicit about that. So I manipulator of int to int. Uh, and now this should run. So I'm glad that that broke. OK, so we ran, but we didn't have any output. Um, so you guys can trust me for now that it ran, <laughs> uh, but we're going to start looking at this for a second and we're going to get some output. Um, so what is good about dependency injection? So let's say that we wanted to start logging things, um, and we wanted to make an interface. We'll go ahead and say, um, you know, public interface, I logger, right? And and we'll just say it has uh, public, well, not public, string log with a string message, right? Pretty easy interface. Um, and then we'll just, uh, what we'll do is we'll come down here and we're going to say, hey, you can go about this two ways. We're going to do it this way first. So you, we can say, hey, we have this new thing that our classes can depend on. Um, add, we're going to do another transient, I logger, and let's make an implementation of it real quick. Okay, and we'll implement that super quick with a right line, right, right line message. And in fact, we'll put, uh, you know, like, date9.now.to short string or something. And then the message. And let's even add some brackets around there, right? OK. Is that? Oh, it should not be returning string. Sorry. We void. OK. So now we can say, like, hey, I've got this new thing that our classes can depend on called iLogger, and here's an implementation of it called Logger. So <clears throat> we're saying now, anytime we want to, we can like go in. So first off, let's see if this builds and runs. But we can say that anytime we want to now start depending on that, let's say we want our processor up here to start depending on it, like private read-only iLogger, uh, and we'll just add that to our list here. Now, we have added that, but we didn't have to change our setup code, right? Um, you know, you have to do it the first time, but then anytime you need uh, to add that as a dependency afterwards, you don't have to change your setup code anymore. Let's go ahead and use this. Uh, uh, we'll say got i and then we'll say logger dot log. We'll say writing result. Okay. Um, run that. <clears throat> All right. So we get our number, we square it, and then we write it back. And uh, we can see that. So what happens though if we want to go over here and look at square, for instance? Um, square. If you look down here at the bottom. Uh, where we're setting these up. Squarer has no constructor specified, right? So th in this instance, we can actually go over here and add uh, Squarer. And in fact, let's do it the other way. 
Private, read only, I logger, log. And we'll just uh, constructor there. So now that we've added this, we don't have to change anything um, because we already have the setup, right? Our dependency injection is already set up um, and we can start using this immediately. So we can say like uh, logger.log and we'll say, uh, you know, data times data equals, you know, data times data. <laughs> And we'll run that. <clears throat> cool. So we can see that now. Um, what this has bought us is we don't have to touch our setup code anymore um, other than adding uh, dependencies. And so what this means is that, you know, let's say that, you know, like previously we would have had to have like ordered these things, right? We would have had to have made a logger and then pass that into squarer and then also pass that into processor. So that there's like, there's like a flow there. There's an order of operations there. You couldn't, you know, create processor without creating logger first. And in fact, since we're using transient on logger, we got two separate loggers. Um, and so we would have had to have constructed two of those. So all of that construction code is greatly simplified with dependency injection because it like it's totally order independent you know like we can even move processor all the way up here right and this will still work because we're not constructing anything right there uh you know as far as processor or logger or square are concerned uh we're just setting them up so i hope that uh gives you guys kind of uh, a feel for why dependency injection is important uh, there are some downsides like i said you lose some of your type safety um, this, uh, you know, there are certain things like we're going to talk about doing configuration stuff pretty soon. So file writer and uh, random int provider, for instance, we wouldn't actually want to construct those right there in build service provider. We would want to have them accept a configuration class in their constructor as a dependency and let them set that stuff up themselves. So uh, we'll talk about that, I think, in maybe the next video or the video after that. Uh, but yeah, I hope this has helped you guys see how dependency injection works from like a console app perspective and why it's important and uh, how, it, how it actually works. So uh, we'll be back next time. And thank you guys for watching.